So what we do in practice in the lab is we go in and we do a series of tests to failure. Right? And we do these tests by controlling sigma 1 and sigma 3. Right? So think about a triaxial test. Um, tri uh, triaxial compression test where this would be sigma 1 and the radial confining stress would be both sigma 2 and sigma 3. They're equal to one another, right? So this is equal to the confining pressure, right? And so we can vary these guys in the lab quite easily and we can then construct we, we test them till failure, and we can construct a more circle. So in other words, at every combination of um, sigma 1 and sigma 3, where, there, where a failure occurs, and we draw a more circle. So for example, when sigma 3 is equal to 0, right, that means there's no confining pressure, and this is an unconfined compressive test. And we draw the Mohr circle on a plot like this, right? Then you can go on construct, you know, varying sigma one and sigma three, continue to do that, and drawing all the Mohr circles. And then from that, if you take, because if you remember, if you remember, the state of stress is always inside this circle. It's always inside this guy. So you can never actually have a state of stress outside the circle at all. Right? The state of stress is either inside the circle, in which case it's elastic, or it's sitting on the surface, in which case the material has, is inelastic or it's failed in some way. Right? And so if we do a series of tests and plot the circles like this, then what we can do is we can construct here's a different color. No, it's elastic. elastic. Elastic meaning if you let, if you remove the load, it'll go back to, you know, it'll recover its uh, original shape. Right? So if it's on the, if it's on the surface, right, then it's, um, then it's uh, inelastic. And remember when this. Um, when the, the, the point at which this is perpendicular here, this angle would be 2 beta. Um, but anyway, if you go in a lab, you construct a series of these, right? Ideally, you'd have infinity of them, right? If you had infinity of them, this would trace a line, right? Where they're all, where you, if you tra traced a line where they were all tangent, this line is tangent to every curve, it would be a continuous smooth line. In reality, you don't do infinity tests. You do some fixed number of tests, and then from that, you can construct a line in which the line is tangent to every curve. Right? So that's this blue line as I've drawn it. And that blue line is what we call the failure surface. Right? So. In the in the shear normal stress plane, that blue line is the fa is the failure surface, which means basically anything under the blue line, the material would not have failed. It can't really be outside the blue line, so it's either under it or it's on it. And so we can evaluate, you know, given a given a stress tensor, we can evaluate this these you know the 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 tau and normal stress components, and then from that we can uh, determine, it, you know, is if tau and the normal stress are, you know, is plotted somewhere down here, then the material is elastic and it's not failed, right? Again, if it's out here, it's sort of an invalid state of stress. I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, but if it hits this line, right? If it hits this line in any way, then the material will fail. Right? So. For example, for a fixed, um, 
for a, for a fixed sigma 3, which would be like an external confining pressure, if I then increased sigma 1, the circle would grow, and at some point, it would touch that line and the material would fail. Okay? So this is a model to predict material failure. Okay? And so uh, this is the, you know, this line, that blue line that I've traced is called the Moore envelope. Now, one thing we can do, because in general this, I mean, it, it sort of looks parabolic or something, but in general that, that could have a very strange shape. And